Learn about the 12th Annual American Heart Walk and meet a couple of its vital volunteers. Coming up next on Carolina People. Good morning. Welcome to Carolina People. This morning we're at Santee Cooper. We're focused on the 12th Annual American Heart Walk to be held at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion October 11th in memory of Ashby Ward. And we're visiting with Jill Watts, the Director of Customer Communications at Santee Cooper and the Co-Chair of the Communications Committee Hi, for Ray. this year's Heart Walk. Thanks for being here, Jill. Thank you for having me. And thanks for hosting us this morning and yesterday and tomorrow. So exciting to think about all the activities going on within Santee Cooper here on the Strand and throughout South Carolina. Absolutely. It's an amazing company. It is. It really is. It's probably given you a lot of thrill having been associated with Santee Cooper for how many years now? 23. Oh, come on. <laughs> so I came here in 1980. And I have enjoyed myself. I feel very blessed to be associated with Santee Cooper. I've had some great jobs, met some great people, and just wonderful times and opportunities. 23 years. Well, I'm so excited to get Graham in tomorrow. Graham Edwards, the chairman of y'all's board, who's been with the company about the same amount of time, 25, 26 years. Real quick about yourself, Jill. Are you originally from the area? I'm from Rock Hill originally, but I've been on the Grand Strand uh, almost 30 years. So I feel like it's my home. I'm married to... A uh, person that's a native of Horry County, lived in Myrtle Beach many years, and um, I have a daughter that was born here, so I guess they'll take me now as a local. <laughs> Absolutely. Jill's now a local. You said growing up in Rock Hill. and Did you come down to Myrtle much growing up? I did. Uh, like most South Carolinians, we spent a lot of summers on the Grand Strand and uh, enjoyed it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What positions have you held throughout Santee Cooper? You said in 23 years. What are some of the positions you've held? Um, it came during uh, the energy crisis back in the 80s when folks were conserving energy and there was a great need to tell folks about how to conserve energy. So I was hired as a residential energy auditor and actually went out in homes and told people about how to uh, manage their thermostats on their heat pump, what insulation was all about. I uh, enjoyed that job a whole lot. Then moved into uh, energy education. My background is in education. I have a uh, undergraduate and graduate degree in education. So mm -hmm. that job was perfect, and I worked with teachers, oh, telling them about how to include energy topics in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And that was a great job to have. Then I moved into public affairs, uh, did that for a few years, and now uh, customer communication. So a lot of variety and um, a lot of good jobs here at Santee Cooper. I know that, that, that position, director customer communications almost sums itself up, but what are the primary responsibilities within that position? Well, it's important for us to communicate uh, with our customers and the public in general, and um, we do that telling them about our operations, and actually, even even more than that, telling them what an asset Santee Cooper is to the area and to the state. Mm -hmm. And um, it's amazing to see, uh, just in the time I've been here, how many different ways you can communicate. You know, folks... Uh, some folks want to see things on TV. Others want to read things in print. Mm -hmm. uh, we're emailing customers now. So um, the ways that you communicate has changed, but basically the objective is still to uh, give folks information about Santee Cooper and our operations. And you all do a great job of that. Thank you. And I see a lot of print ads. Obviously, I see a lot of uh, TV as, as well as Absolutely. free publication that gets out there. It's, it's surely been gotten out very well. Can you share with the viewers real quick how you got involved uh, as the communications co-chair with the general manager of TV13, Mike Pumo, for this year's Heart Walk? Uh, a couple of things I think got me involved. Um, as you said, Graham Edwards, our chairman of the board at Santee Cooper, mm -hmm. stepped up to the plate and agreed to co-chair with mm -hmm. Brad Dean with yeah. the chamber. And mm -hmm. we're so happy about that. Graham has always done a great job in the community, and uh, he wants to serve the community. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want to support that effort um, for him. Mm -hmm. um, when I heard that it was in memory of Ashby, that certainly guided um, uh, my plans, and I certainly wanted to be involved after I heard that. Um, I had the opportunity to work with Ashby over the years through the chamber. I served on the chamber board uh, and, and a lot of other things through the chamber. and. Ashby uh, was a great Rotarian. Uh, he was a member of our club. 
uh, Myrtle Beach Rotary, mm-hmm. longtime member. And uh, it's certainly a special to be able to have him associated with the walk this year, and that certainly uh, helped me to step up to the plate. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we think about Rotary. Can I ask real quick about Rotary? And I think it was just last night, Jill, that you became the new president of Myrtle Beach Rotary. You took on the position. Is that an annual position? or? A... Yes, thank goodness. It's just a year. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a lot of fun. Real quick for viewers who may not be familiar with Rotary, what exactly is Rotary? Well, Rotary is a civic organization dedicated. Our motto is service above self. And we not only get involved locally in education, all kinds of humanitarian things locally, mm-hmm. but also internationally. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rot- uh, Rotary was instrumental in stamping out polio in the world. And you think, well, is there still polio in the world? Well, there mm-hmm. is still a little bit, but Rotary has been instrumental in, in bringing polio to an end. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a great organization where people can come together from all walks of life and not only serve their local community, but internationally. It's a great fellowship. That's wonderful. Congratulations on the, that, that very uh, dedicated task that will be ahead of, for the next year of committing so much time to Rotary, as well as to th- this amazing event, October 11th. And, and I know that's a, that's a big commitment on, on your part, volunteer-wise. And it is a heck of a lot of volunteers that will be out there, as well as all the walkers that will be out that day. Can you share with the viewers real quick your impression of Ashby Ward as a leader in our community and throughout South Carolina? Well, Ashby was absolutely the consummate leader. Um, he had a great way of pulling the right people together to make a team. He had a lot of wisdom, yet he had a lot of humility. Um, just a caring type person. He had a great sense of humor, dry mm-hmm. sense of humor. Um, was able just to lead the chamber through so much. and. Where would the Grand Strand be without his decades of service? Um, we, we were blessed to have Ashby in our community. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Jill, how does your role as co-chair of the Communications Committee, along with Mike Pumo, fit into your responsibilities at Santee Cooper? Well, it's great. Uh, I think I told someone earlier that I think I've learned as much working with volunteers and outside and charitable work as I have here at Santee Cooper. Mm-hmm. Um, being in communications all these years, I think we'll be able, Mike and I, to come together. And our main objective will be to uh, let folks know about the importance of supporting the walk. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to do that in a couple of different ways initially. We really want to get a lot of corporate sponsors involved. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, without companies stepping up to the plate and becoming a sponsor, the walk could not exist. Um, and there are lots of great opportunities for those companies to receive not only a great feeling to know that they've helped stamp out heart disease, uh, but also getting some exposure for their company, getting um, morale built within their employees and the families associated with those companies. So getting the word out about corporate sponsors will be one of our first things that we do uh, to communicate. So that's getting the word out about opportunities for corporate sponsors as well, sponsorships, exactly. And there are so many opportunities from... Uh, getting signs out at the walk to a company coming and exhibiting and having uh, their promotional and uh, sales material at the walk um, all the way up to uh, higher levels of sponsorships where you get great TV exposure, print exposure, logos on the campaign materials that we'll be using. It's so exciting to see we're less than four months now from the walk, but you already have a presenting sponsor, a new natural spring water company. Santee Cooper is committed at a platinum level. I think you're expecting to hear from a couple other potential platinum sponsors. And it's so exciting to think that we're less than four months away, but we're still that far away, and there's still that many opportunities for companies to sign on and get a heck of a lot, bang for that buck, giving back to the Heart Association, giving back to the community, and helping to honor and memory uh, Ashby Ward. Very big. As you know, this walk covers uh, uh, Georgetown and Horry County. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of businesses and companies, employees in that area. So there's lots of opportunities for companies to be involved. Absolutely. And first on your agenda is getting that out. Have you put together the rest of the committee, the committee members? Yes. Uh, we have Tom Vitt from HTC. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a couple of people that haven't committed that I won't mention their name yet. Um, uh, Several other people that have have stepped on board um, to be a part of the committee. Absolutely. It'll be a spectacular group. Whoever's on there, just knowing that you and Mike are co-chairing it, even if it was just the two of y'all along with Tom, it would still be a spectacular committee bringing so much to the table. Obviously, Fox 43 is going to commit quite a bit as well. We're very excited 
You'll be walking. Will you be walking Absolutely. the team from Santee Cooper? It's Cooking? on my calendar here and at home. Yes. So we will be there, no yeah. doubt. And your family will be with you. Yes, I have a 14-year-old daughter. Uh, my husband, we will be there. We have a great big Santee Cooper family there as well. We're putting our teams together. Great. Right, Jill. And, and obviously, there, are there some opportunities for other folks if they wanted to help out on the communications committee? Yes. Um, we're really looking particularly uh, two areas, um, all kinds of media representatives. If you are involved in print, newspaper, magazine, TV, radio, and you'd like to help spread the word about the walk, we would love to partner with you to do that. Uh, we're also looking at civic organizations. If you're a member of an organization and you would like uh, Graham or Brad to come and speak about uh, the walk, we would love that opportunity. Just call us and we'll be glad to, to partner with you to get the word out. And I'm so glad you mentioned Graham and Brad. But real quick, Jill, how, how will fo who would folks want to contact if they, if they knew any? They can contact uh, me, Jill Watts, at Santee Cooper. Okay. I'll be glad to steer them in the right direction. Fantastic. You all are very easy to find. With Brad and, and Graham co-chairing, how will you enlist, we've got a little less than a minute, Jill, their support to really build up the heart walk? Well, both of them are very dedicated personally. I mean, they've stepped up the plate to give their time and energies, and uh, we will make a great team doing that. Uh, both of them have a proven track record of caring about the community, and they're going to make a great team. Uh, for us, and they want to get out and spread the word. They have already committed on their calendars uh, interview times with different medias mm -hmm. and um, speaking with, with groups. We've got Graham signed up to speak at several uh, Rotary clubs in the area right. and, and TV interviews as well. And Jill, lastly, why do you think it's important for local businesses or local individuals to get out and walk that day? Why do you think it's important to help the American Art Association? Well, you know, you may have read the quote uh, Winston Churchill said, uh, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life of what we give. And I think that is so true. I think we're all here, really, to give and to be of service. And what better way to do it than through the American Heart Association and this wall? So. From the helm of Rotary, taking it on last night, to now reaching out uh, to help the American Heart Association get the word out, about an amazing event in memory of Ashby Ward, October 11th the date, 9 a.m. registration, 10 a.m. to get out and walk. Jill, thanks so much for making this a reality. I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People. Sarah Moore coming up next. Good morning. Welcome back to Carolina People. This morning we're at Santee Cooper. We're focused on the 12th annual Heart Walk to be held at the Myrtle Beach Pavilion on October 11th. And we're visiting with Sarah Moore, the Vice President of Visitor Services of the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce and the Logistics Chair for this year's Heart Walk. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. How exciting. I, coming in after Jill, who's co-chairing the event with the, uh, the com Communications Committee with Mike Pumo, Think about all the activities going on, and logistics is such a big deal. Not only that day, October 11th, but leading up to it, so much preparation and work for you, Sarah. We do have quite a few things to undertake before the October event gets here, but I'm sure we'll be ready for it. Uh, we've got all kinds of things in mind from uh, food and music and screenings and just trying to make sure that everybody has a really good time getting pumped up prior to the walk and has a fun time cooling down after the walk. Yes, yes. Thank you so much on behalf of all the volunteers and folks associated with the Heart Association. We're making that commitment. Real quick about yourself, Sarah. Are you originally from the area? No, I actually grew up in the western part of North Carolina. I'm from Hickory. Mm -hmm. And uh, as all of our market research will tell you, there are a lot of people from Hickory that come down here to the beach, and I was one of those folks. And eventually the beach just led me here. Do you have family here with you in the area? Two teenage daughters, uh, Lauren, who is a... Uh, Rising junior at Myrtle Beach High School, and Paige is going into her ninth grade year at Myrtle Beach High School. Fantastic. What actually brought you to the Myrtle Beach area? Well, the opportunity for career changes um, in the beach. I have always loved the beach when I was growing up, visiting here, when I would leave. I didn't want to go home. It was as though my heart was right here. Mm -hmm. And when the opportunity presented itself, I jumped on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What have you been doing prior to your move to the area? 
I had eight years of journalism experience working for a small newspaper in North Carolina, mm -hmm. and then quite fell into uh, chamber work, and just found it to be my first love. It was where I was supposed to be, and actually helped start up a small visitor center in that chamber uh, in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And as that job expanded and I moved into another role with Grandfather Mountain, I became a relationship marketing specialist, and my job was to work with chambers all throughout the western part of North Carolina and across the state in promoting grandfather's name. So when the beach came up, Ashby Ward's name was the number one name and the number one place I wanted to be. Mm, absolutely. Having grown up down here, w w while you were in western North Carolina, did you s spend a lot of time bringing your girls down here? Oh, yes. We were down here four and five times a year every summer, ever since I was probably five or six years old, and that continued after the children were born. How exciting, Sarah. How long have you worked in your role as Vice President of Visitor Services? I've been in the role for almost seven years. Mm. Uh, we had some changes as the Chamber has grown. We've divided divisions and realigned some responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And I had the big uh, job of following in the footsteps of Marilyn Tuning. Her division uh, actually divided up and community programs and events was created and then the Visitor Centers Division was created. And that allowed us to concentrate on some new ideas that we wanted to try with visitor centers and allowed Maryland to concentrate more on community programs and events. So it worked well for me because I love to talk and I haven't ever met a stranger. So it worked out real well for me. Absolutely. And there's so much going on within the chamber. The visitor center is so, uh, really the first impression oftentimes that a visitor of the area gets of the Myrtle Beach area is that experience, whether it's in North Myrtle or in Ainer now, the new visitor center. Can we talk about that? The Ashby Ward Welcome Center. Is that, is that what it's called? Yes, it, and it truly is. If you stop to think about it, all of the visitor centers are the living room for the business community. Mm -hmm. So it's really our job to make sure that people feel welcome, they get the information that they need, and that they know that anytime they have a question, they can call or come by our office. Mm -hmm. um, the Ashby Ward office out in Ainer was opened in January. And we are just exceeding expectations by leaps and bounds. Um, we joke about uh, running out of toilet paper out there, but that truly is one of the situations we run into, that we've just had such a phenomenal traffic count out there that uh, we're finding we're having to rethink a lot of things and, and anticipate a little bit more, but we're having a great time. We've already welcomed over 50,000 visitors this year, and that's on target with our projection to see over 200,000 people this year. And obviously we have an office in Merle's Inlet that welcomes about 25,000 people each year. Mm -hmm. And then the Oak Street office sees about 50,000 people each year. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we're handling phone calls as well. So that telephone call center is running uh, pretty much five days a week, but we can handle calls seven days a week, 24 hours a day. So we can handle as many as uh, half a million calls. And this past year we handled about 300,000 calls. 300,000 calls, Sarah. That's amazing. Yes, it is, and it's amazing that we do it with such precision and with customer service in mind always. You know, that was one of Mr. Ward's standards, and he always emphasized that we were to handle each call individually as though it was the first time that question had ever been asked, and we worked very hard to do that. And I'm so glad you mentioned Mr. Ward. Sarah, when you think about uh, the opening of the, the official Welcome Center there in Ainer, in his name, in his honor, did he ever share with you his thoughts on, on the dedication in his honor? He was totally shocked the day that that was announced. We went to the groundbreaking, and as, uh, as most folks know, that was a highly guarded secret. Uh, and when it was announced, he was floored. And as soon as we opened that office, uh, it wasn't even a month, he came to all of us and said, okay, it's opened, everybody knows where it is, let's drop the Ashby Ward off of it. He just never wanted to take credit for these types of things. He was more a behind-the-scenes person to make sure that we were always doing the right thing, but he never wanted his name attached. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sir, can we talk real quick about, and I'm, and I'm sure he's an amazingly um, he was an amazingly humble man, and we're so blessed to be able to honor him in his memory here at this year's Heart Walk. When, you, when we think about the Visitor Center, can, can you share with viewers real quick what's provided at the Visitor Center? or? Are inquiries normal, normally coming from when folks stop in a visitor center? We do see so many visitors actually at the Ainer office. About 20% of the visitors who come in don't have reservations, believe it or not. And in this day and time, you just wouldn't think anybody would venture to the beach without reservations. Mm -hmm. But they do come out there, and we have a computer system set up where they can go directly to a computer, do research. We also have a direct dial feature where folks can go right over, pick up a brochure, 
uh, call the hotel directly, book a room immediately, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of services that they can book the room right there and know where they're going to stay once they get to the beach. Mm -hmm. We also uh, can register people to vote. Uh, we have all kinds of statistical information for people who are considering relocating or opening a business here. Mm -hmm. uh, just anything you can think of in regard to business or to relocation information, we have it. We also have a lot of information about events going on in the area and try to stay on top of that 12 months in advance so that if someone is not aware, say that in around Thanksgiving that we have the Intercoastal Christmas Regatta, they can see that on our calendar mm -hmm. and then plan a trip back to shop and, and spend some time here during Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, absolutely. And, and, and a couple of the most frequently asked questions, Sarah, that, that uh, there's so many, I, I, I guess that's almost impossible to think of. Well, we get a lot of amusing questions, and um, one in particular that stands out in my mind, folks will call us and say, we're planning on coming in August, can you tell us when the next hurricane's going to hit? Ooh. Or we'll have folks call from landlocked states and they'll say, why is there some, uh, at some times of the day, there's a lot of beach to walk on, and at other times of the day, there isn't so much beach to walk on? We've had folks go down to Merle's Inlet to launch a boat. They want to know where all the water's gone, and they want to know why there are so many jellyfish on the beach. Sometimes they'll call and ask uh, where they can get a, a room that has a view of the mountains and the beach. So we, we run the gamut. You truly have to be an information specialist. It's not just enough to be able to answer the phone and take a request for information. You have to know the area. And we spend a lot of time training, going out and doing familiarization tours of the area to stay up to speed on what's going on in the south end of the beach, in the Conway area, the North Strand area, as well as in Myrtle Beach. Sir, you also have a big commitment to chamber members. As Vice President of Visitor Services, you do a lot with chamber members as well. We do. We represent almost 2,500 members, so it's very mm -hmm. important to each one of those that we do the best job that we can do to help push business into their doors. Mm -hmm. So we spend a lot of time trying to make new members feel welcome, uh, trying to interact with them and let them know about the services that we provide. There's just so much that they can take advantage of, and the more they get to know us and get into our offices, the easier it is for us to work with them and help make those referrals. Mm -hmm. you, you also in, are involved, am I correct, sir, with handling visitors' complaints? To oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And you would think with 13 million visitors a year that we would handle just a million complaints. Every time I ask that question do, during a new member tour, I'm amazed at the answers I get. But I think it speaks very well for the Grand Strand in that with 13 million visitors a year, we handle fewer than 500 complaints each year. Now that committee is a joint committee of the Chamber and the Hospitality Association, and they're a committee of their peers. They're people from retail, hotels, you name it, every industry is represented, and they meet quarterly to review those complaints and go out and do on-site inspections when called for. But mainly their job is to serve as an ombudsman. They just want to let the business know that we've received the complaint, make sure they're aware of it, and they've taken steps to address it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We really don't sit in judgment. Just let them have the feedback. Right, right, absolutely. Well, I'm so glad you pointed that out because that's surely something that a lot of folks would be interested in. We've got a couple of minutes. Big focus October 11th, and, and a huge focus is your commitment to serve as logistics chair. Can, we sh can you share with viewers real quick some of the reasons why possibly you took on this challenging task, but as well, have you had any experience doing something similar to this? Well, seven years ago when I came to Myrtle Beach, uh, Ashby Ward didn't know who I was from anyone else. But as I got my foot in the door, he took a chance on me, just like he does everyone that works there. And he believed in me just as he believed in this community and everyone who works with him. Um, because of that, this is an opportunity to pay him back for his confidence in all of us. And having had experience working with the Myrtle Beach Marathon, as well as a bicycle ride for a Chamber of Commerce back in North Carolina, um, I think my skills are pretty well matched up. Uh, I help a lot with sun fun activities and just, I love being out on the beach and working with people. So this gives us an opportunity to pull chamber staff together as well as people in the community and get together behind a cause that's very important to us because it did claim Mr. Ward as well as I have a father-in-law who died from that as well. Mm, boy. Well, we're really excited about uh, knowing that you're there and to think about October 11th. We, can you share some of the things that you'll be handling on October 11th as it gets closer? 
Well, my, my greatest challenge, I think, is I want to get make sure that the runners get pumped up before they get ready to get out on that beach and walk. Mm-hmm. Uh, I want them to be psyched, and, and I think the whole uh, committee is going to be focused on trying to make sure that early in the morning that they have fun and that they enjoy the walk, because certainly the beach offers a, a wonderful place to walk and meditate and to get our minds focused on the good that we're doing for the community. But then after the walk, we want to be sure that everybody has a good time, too, and checks in with their health. Because even if you don't walk, you might want to come to some of the health screenings and the cholesterol screenings mm-hmm. and take part in some of the festivities that will be going on after the walk. So we're really looking forward to a very fun field day for not just the walkers, but for the entire family. Lastly, Sarah, what do you like best about what you're doing? I think the opportunity um, that was presented to me is that I, the Visitor Center's division is a training ground for new staff. And one of the greatest compliments our division receives is that folks are promoted from our division into the other divisions in the management. They get a real good ground basis in that call center and in the Visitor Center environment, and then they move up through the ranks. And I just think it speaks volumes that we're able to promote from within and to train a really very dedicated staff that's committed to this community. Absolutely. The American Art Association is blessed to get a trainer, a trainer who helps train so many folks who are in the, throughout the Myrtle Beach Area Chamber of Commerce who give back so much to the community through all charities, through so many charities, not just the American Art Association, but obviously the day to honor Ashby Ward is upon us less than four months now, October 11th. Sarah, thanks so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Greg. Absolutely. Stay tuned to more Carolina People coming up next. We want to thank Jill Watts and Sarah Moore for making today's Carolina people so special. Get out there October 11th, Myrtle Beach Pavilion, American Heart Walk.